let's go in and explore what's inside these reservoirs. the small reservoir in 1848 and it was finished around 1851 and then 1852 CNG Trek Ventures in collaboration with CNG Photography a solo adventure shop Vassello Group. Good morning, guys. Welcome to another adventure. Today with us, we have um, Stephen Malia, who is very knowledgeable about cisterns and reservoirs, and we'll be exploring. If you can see behind me, the uh, Santa Margherita Lines part of them, and we will be exploring two very old reservoirs. starting by exploring the first one there's another one on the other side but we're starting to explore this one this one uh, is the smaller one about 7500 or, or less 7000 tons and uh, we have different dates of uh, of when this was was built different maps what, what about the the dates on the map Stephen um, and the plan uh, the plans were proposed uh, the small reservoir in 1848 and it was finished around 1851 and then 1852 the other one was proposed. the one on the other side um, okay uh, the plans fact, also there's, there's show a, there's a date over there and it shows 1849 um uh, you see these uh, different stones that are coming out of the wall this these used ones, to be huh? buttresses and they used down. to come down all the way into the like, street. Like, like uh, we are showing on the photo. They acted as a buttress to support the, the walls. And obviously when they opened uh, the two um, uh, tunnels, Helen, yes. um, they had to remove them, unfortunately. Something else to note is that the street level here was much, much, much lower. Okay. It was probably about uh, 1.5 to 2 meters lower. In fact, to enter this reservoir, you had to go up a series of steps on both sides, even this one and even on the other side. So let's go in and explore what's inside these reservoirs. Here we are guys, down this amazing, amazing reservoir in, in Bormlats, in Cospico, as we told you. Steve, can you give us some general information about this one? Steve is a guru eh? in, in this area. Um, as you can see, this is uh, the original design um, of the British period. Um, there were some interventions during, um, before the war and even after the war. As you can see in the ceiling, the Shorok and Maltese, the stone slabs were actually replaced by concrete slabs. Um, the reason was uh, either war damage, as we can see down there, there is actually um, a concrete shuttered arc, which indicates um, it was either damaged by war or altered either to clean it. Um, I do have some information that uh, when this was cleaned in the 60s and 70s, a part of the ceiling was removed. Luckily, the original arches were saved, and uh, obviously, instead of putting back the shorok, the, the stone slabs, they suggested to put uh, concrete slabs instead. It's not the ideal restoration method, it's not something that we would be glad to do today, but at, during those times, it was a different story. They didn't, you know, have heritage malta, they didn't <laughs> have superintendents. Um, uh, they just did the necessities, basically. Looking, looking up, guys, I'm noticing that, that black thing over there. What's, what's that exactly, Steve? Um, that black most line? Probably, most probably it was um, 
the maximum level of water at some point time being it was up to there so it was full no it, it was yes it was full but also uh, it looks like oil residue that is actually all the way around the, the perimeter of the reservoir um, probably uh, either an oil spill on the street going up the stairs guys there's this this wooden thing here and it has marks on it as you can see 28 what's what's exactly this steve what what was it used um, for? it's a common marker that uh, in the british period reservoirs used to see uh, a wooden plank with uh, the number of feet from the bottom of the reservoir uh, up to the street level um, so as i was explaining earlier uh, the street level before used to be 26 feet down here down here no it is further up since uh, they added uh, they raised up the road. Okay, like, like we were saying before. Exactly. Referring to the, to the um, street level. Uh, this is also in the other reservoir and a couple of other reservoirs that I've been searching for. Okay, good. We were also talking about the Shorok or Shriek. These, these are the old ones. Uh, Steve, these no? are the old ones and these are the... Stone ones made these of are the, limestone? These are the newer ones. As you can see, they are reinforced with uh, rebar. Unfortunately behind me guys, you can see a lot of waste here People going through the St. Helen gate Throwing things over here Unfortunately Something interesting to note is that Stephen is doing um, uh, research Some, some research, research about reservoirs in Malta What about this extensive research, Stephen? Um, for the past year I've been working on a project called El Gibion Which is, in English is uh, the reservoir basically um, where we are searching for abandoned and mostly, you know, the, the, the mostly used reservoirs in Malta, which are historic. Um, uh, the water history in Malta is very vast, so um, uh, we are focusing on Knights period and the British period. We are searching for them and taking photographical surveys. And we are creating a book uh, called uh, The History of Water Conservation in Maltese. The story at Al Hazna Al Ilma. And when when this book will be out? Um, we are aiming at um, uh, probably beginning or mid between beginning and mid 2022. Okay, we will be looking forward to to share this book with you again. So let's talk, guys. Then let's explore. You can see on my on my wrist, guys, uh, this wristband in support of Pink October. During October, um, uh, there's a big initiative going around, Pink October. The first thing we can notice, guys, here, around us, it's, it's an open space. But Stephen is indicating some, something very, very uh, interesting. What about these things on the walls? These, this is where the arches used to be. The old, the exactly, original arches. Exactly. The arches used to go this way, uh -huh. all the way to a quarter of the reservoir that rested on pillars, and then over to the next pillar, on to the other side. Obviously, this is a concrete ceiling with uh, concrete columns. Yes, as you can see, there are uh, there's concrete all over here. And what's interesting over there, Stephen? You were telling me. Exactly. Um, uh, let's go. Let's go closer. Over there, you can see the arched shape where, in Maltese, we say shorok, the 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 slabs okay. were um, in gastati. In say in Maltese, in say Maltese <laughs> were inserted inside the wall. So you can basically see where the original ceiling used to be. Okay, as you can see them, they are round guys. I like that one. There are four of them. One, exactly. two, three, four. four. There were four chambers. And then there used to be a whole line of pillars, pillars that along the way used to go all the way to the other side. So the original ceiling was actually just three courses below where the existing one you see right there. Okay. We are noticing here, guys, as well. This this sort of grey thing. It it resembles the the thing you, they used to plaster the Victoria lines with. What what is it exactly? Um, 
the usual uh, term in Maltese is called defun. It's defun. a type of plastering that they used uh, before, um, obviously, new technologies came in today um, to plaster and waterproof wells. Um, it's a mixture of uh, concrete, clay. There's also, you can see, um, uh, uh, you can see the clay particles yes, yes. in it. The brown, um, uh, brown particles. No? It's extremely hard to remove. Um, uh, you can't. It's very difficult to chip away. Um, in some places, they they also use this to plaster inside homes. In okay. some areas where there's humidity. Um, uh, in this particular case, you can see it runs all along the whole perimeter of the reservoir where the original ceiling used to be. Okay. Um, uh, and here we also notice uh, where the original water catchment pipes were. On this side, you can see um, uh, these two pipes that came from the other side next to the roundabout, um, where there is an open reservoir that acts as a sump. Uh, just above us, there is a huge water catchment area that runs, the, it's a runoff water from obviously rainwater. Mm -hmm. It goes into the sump. Uh, the dirt that is mixed with the water is collected into that reservoir and then it it's filtered, it's, it's, sorry, exactly, it filters onto the first reservoir which we are standing on now so that the reservoir doesn't get dirty. Okay. Now we are in the second reservoir guys. This one can store up to 10,000 cubic meters of water or 10,000 tons, whatever. We're going down. Stephen is leading this exploration. We are down the stairs guys and there's a nasty smell of sewage here. Stephen told me that it could be that sewage was leaking here. Let, let us show you. This is um, more re rebuilt because the, the columns were like the other one we, we saw before, but now they are concrete ones, as you can see. Um, as you can see, um, it was demolished. Uh, the exact date is not really established, but it could be between 1950s and 19, late 1960s. The columns are, are very different, you see, those, those, are, those are all made of concrete. Now, On the back, you can see some of the original columns, actually right on the back um, the reason why they were left is not established um, uh, you can see they're made of masonry of franca yes, stone yes, yes. Um, and the ceiling is also lower it's lower than the other one as we explained earlier in the video um, uh, the ceiling was lowered for probably for the reason to create a parking or a football ground as well um, uh, but the main reason it was lowered again it's not 100 percent established um, uh, there is a lot of water at the moment and it looks like it's mixed with sewage uh, which is an issue that has to be addressed we are out of the reservoirs now guys and behind us you can see the magnificent St. Helen Gate during the research I was doing about these reservoirs Steve, I found out that this could have some relations with um, aqueduct coming all the way from Fawara, Fawara. Rendi, Lo, Ata, Shin Ma mainly, the, the Fawara. Have... mainly Fawara yes. um, there is not 100% evidence that these two reservoirs uh, received water from Fawara but for sure uh -huh. there is documented that the other reservoirs and the Cordine area uh, they were connected they were connected to the okay. Fawara Koda. so there is no proof that these reservoirs actually were connected to this Bouveri Aqueduct no? Bouveri is another reservoir uh -huh. located in Cordine. There is another huge reservoir which is probably one of the largest uh, in Malta alongside with the Ta'ali reservoirs with um, uh, Kirkop and it's a long list. There's one in Lua, no? Okay. The Lua, there are three. There are three. Lately There's... there there was a restored one? Yes, yes. That one is another naval one which was supplied water to the dockyard. Okay. But later on these also supplied water to the dockyards but in the other the, the older versions. Okay, good. Um, uh, when the overflow uh, fills up, it carries on into culverts all the way to Santa Teresa. There is another reservoir there, and then from that reservoir... There's that little church, no? Exactly. Okay. It connects uh, to the uh, Naval Bakery, which is today the museum. Okay. The Naval Museum. In Birgo? In Birgo, yes. Okay. yes. So guys, hope you found this information about these reservoirs near Santa Elena Gate. Interesting, thanks to see Malia cars going by here sorry for the noise uh, Steve what about the uh, your, your publication again um, uh, the publication I'm doing is for Potino cares um, it's on the history of water conservation um, uh, it should be out by next year water one water two so keep an eye guys keep an eye open for his study 
remember to support Pink October, guys, during this month of October. We are off to our next exploration, guys. Until next time. Safa Slim. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and share.